2024 is the year many students on campus are voting for the first time. Having a campus voting location Coming up on DAP 13, University of the are opening early voting for people eager to get their votes in ahead of time before the upcoming Trump versus Harris election night. And an upcoming Trunk or Treat event hosted for campus for kids and their families to attend for candy and fun games. Coming to you very soon. CAPS 13 News starts right now. Hello and welcome to CAPS 13 News. I'm Mitch Adams. And I'm Riley Wagner. The 58th annual Maple Leaf Parade brought thousands to Missouri this past weekend. Our CAPS 13 reporter, Zach Shelby, finds out more. In Carthage, Missouri, a parade kicked off the final day of the week-long Maple Leaf Festival, with people lining the route hoping to spot some of over 180 floats and multiple local marching bands. The parade lasted about an hour in total, but all day long vendors and food trucks surrounded the town. The Carthage Farmer's Market, just a couple blocks over, was offering festival goers yet another hub of activity and harvest goodies available for purchase. Tammy Wilson, a worker with the market, shared how grateful they are for this opportunity and this time of year. It's our main business, uh, besides the uh, greenhouse in the spring, we do uh, produce in the summer and, and fall, and, and uh, let's, we've got several bakers here with cinnamon rolls, pies, cookies. Operating alongside the market was Cinna Roller, showcasing just a few of over 100 flavors of cinnamon rolls. Owner Mahan Rai Fossen says they were looking forward to the festival. However, for him, it's about more than just increasing his business. It really seems like it brings the community together, and not only that, but surrounding areas. It's, it's not really a part of sales. Like, I hope people stop by, but for me, it's about the smiles and being able to cherish a moment together. So we set up here on Saturdays, and then we're also on pop-ups around Web City and, and Dunaway. We started when I was around 17, 16, so it's been six to seven years now that we've been running. So we were in another state running the business for a little bit, and uh, so we're in the middle of purchasing a store over in Web City, so 10 South Main over there, and uh, that'll be his first business. He's 22, and he's a young entrepreneur, and I will be his baker. <laughs> The day and festival wrapped up with live music, car, and tractor shows. Businesses and people eager for this time again next year. Reporting for CAPS 13, I'm Zach Shelby. Pittsburgh State is beginning the early steps of tearing down Shirk Hall and Shirk Annex. This has forced the Pitt State Police to start packing and begin looking for a new place to go on campus. This demolition is part of an official campus effort to better the community. This plan also includes moving or dissolving departments and knocking down old buildings that aren't usable anymore. Luckily, campus police found a new home on the second floor of the Horace Mann building. We managed to speak to Police Chief Stu Height about the situation. It's a really good space as far as being super close to campus. And I mean, we're, we're right across the plaza from um, the Overman Student Center. There's a lot of infrastructure that goes along with this move. Logistically, it's a good, good fit for us. University Police and Public Safety is officially open in Horace Mann. Contacting Pitt PD has not changed. Pitty Land is an unit located in Northwest Pittsburgh. Kittyland is a great spot for kids to have fun. Where the amusement park first opened in 1953, the famous train was the first ever ride at the park. Kittyland opens in the spring and closes in early fall, which means it is now time for the park to be shut down for the season. Head athletic trainer at Pittsburgh State University, Kevin Calm has lived in Pittsburgh for the last 14 years. He talks to us about how important the park has been to him and his kids. Well, we take our kids to Kitty Land a lot. We have we have three young girls, and um, we take them all through the spring and the summer, and they really enjoy being there. The rides are fun. It's a family atmosphere, and it gives us a, a fun escape on the weekends. Um, it is sad that um, it closes for the fall. Obviously, it's understandable um, with the cold weather and the snow, but um, we, we'll look forward to it in the spring, and, and we can't wait for it to reopen the next year. 
Coming up next on CAPS 13 News, the Pitt State Career Fair opens up allowing students to forge connections and future career paths with nearby companies and employees. All coming to you after the break. Oh, hey! Did you get drugs off the street again? It's not that I'm upset, just disappointed. But I'm more concerned about your safety. Are you at least gonna get your drugs tested for fentanyl? What? Do you know how dangerous that can be? Here, say this chocolate chip cookie is the drugs that you got. Let's look at all these chocolate chips. See how they're not evenly distributed? That's how fentanyl works. Anytime you get drugs, make sure you test all the areas to see if there's fentanyl. You never know what chips could be hiding. Whoa, let's pause right there. Good job on going out and taking a hike, but do you know if that tree is safe to rest on? The main problem with this image here is this vine. How can you tell if it's poison ivy? Poison ivy is number one on our list of plants to avoid because it contains a resin that can induce an unpleasant skin rash if you touch it. Poison ivy you see here in Kansas will grow on a vine climbing up trees. The best way to tell if a plant is poison ivy is if it has three leaves. Remember the saying, leaves of three, let it be. If you come into contact with poison ivy, the best way to avoid symptoms is to wash with soap and water thoroughly. If you contract a rash, rubbing calamine lotion on the area is effective. This has been Know Your Nature. As a part of homecoming week, students teamed up to compete in a relay competition. I went to the raft race relays and talked to some people there to find out more about the event. Man, it's a long distance. Uh, it's a long way. I just walked over there and saw some people laying on the ground. Some guy had to take his shirt off. It was getting too heavy. It's like a, it's like a 50 meter swim or whatever. I don't even know. I, I'm, not, I'm not into the metric system, but those guys got it good. The Pittsburgh State Homecoming Committee hosts the annual raft race relays to see who could build the most effective vessel out of household supplies. The competition is open to organizations and individual student teams. As far as the rafts go, you kind of have like a um, requirement, I guess you could say, um, or like a limit of what materials you can use. So there's like cardboard, duct tape, and then you can use some like spray rubber epoxy, I'm pretty sure. But you're limited to like a certain amount of all of it. So each of them are, you know, because it'd be really easy to build a boat that, you know, with as much supplies as you want. So they're kind of limited. The relay is simple. Get your boat across the president's pond to your teammates and then rely on your teammates to get it back across. Even though it's a fun competition, it's also an opportunity to make friends on campus and get more involved with the campus community. I think it's just, I think it's just good that we build community on campus, um, get everybody together. Uh, we don't want anybody alone, and it's good to have a lot of people get, uh, like meet up and uh, get to know each other. I mean, I'm seeing people right behind you right now shaking hands and get to know each other right now. So uh, any, any chance for anybody to know each other is a good opportunity on yeah. campus. At Pittsburgh State for CAPS 13 News, Mitch Adams. It's election season, and you don't have to vote on election day as early voting opportunities are around this Pittsburgh State University on campus at the Bicknell Family Center of Arts. CAPS 13 reporter A.J. Kohler 2024 is the year many students on campus are voting for the first time. Having a campus voting location is an easy way to make sure students are voting and engaging in the democratic process, as students with busy schedules may not be able to have the time to go and vote on November 5th. I have an inconsistent work schedule just because it's part time and shifts and everything, along with class. I don't. I know I have free time now to vote. I don't always know if I'll have free time to vote when it actually comes around. This is more convenient. That's why I'm here. According to the National Study of Learning, Voting, and Engagement, having polling places on college campuses can close equity gaps and people who vote when they are younger are more likely to become lifelong voters. Um, students live here, they live in the community, um, and they have 
just just as much a right to vote as anyone else. Um, and so uh, this get this having a polling place on campus allows them to do that. It gives them a voice in the community. So yeah, I think it's important and I hope we see more stuff like this. Students weren't the only ones voting at this polling place, as every polling place is open to the public. Over 282 votes were casted in the early hours of the day, with a final total of around 700 votes for the whole day, which is one of the highest totals for early voting on campus in the past 20 years. A lot of people don't have easy, easy access to voting. Um, a lot of people have to jump the hoops. The fact that we have a polling place on campus and that we have a university who is willing to commit to protecting students' right to vote and making it accessible and making it easy for them to vote, that's a, that's, that's a, it's a gift, you know? And so take advantage of it. Um, please use your voice, use your vote. Um, and don't, you know, don't take it for granted. Um, it's really important. With CAPS 13 News, I'm AJ Kohler. If you missed the polling place at the Bicknell, there are other opportunities at the Homer Cole Community Center on October 26th between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., October 27th between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. at Meadowbrook Mall, or any time from now until November 1st between 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the County Courthouse. Other than that, if you need help finding your polling place on Election Day, which is November 5th, go to myvoteinfo.votekansas.org. As fall comes in birds of all as fall comes in birds of all kinds begin migrating to Pittsburgh State students around getting involved. It's a bird migration awareness week and students for sustainability and the Student Government Association partnered together to give students the chance to make homemade bird feeders. The two-day event, which took place at the Oval, allowed students to make bird feeders outside of string, pine cones, peanut butter, and bird seed. The egg excellent the excellent event. <laughs> helped show students on how easy it is to be one with nature through an organic way. My favorite part about today is kind of seeing the students on campus get involved and maybe students they don't know about, students for sustainability, um, bringing awareness to the club and also awareness to the like three and my hands are just... I'm just like very over It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Students for Sustainability will also have other activities this week to raise awareness of bird collisions that include a guest speaker. Here on the PSU campus, the athletic department makes it easy for the public and for students to get tickets to events. Located in the Garfield Weed Building, it is the PSU ticket office. The ticket office provides students, faculty, as well as the general public access to purchasing tickets for events here on the PSU campus. This includes sporting events, PSU also provides free tickets for students to the home games for those sporting events. Getting these tickets will give students free entry to those like football games at Carney Smith Stadium, as well as other events held in John Lance Arena. Students must have their school ID available at the time of getting this ticket from the ticket office. We just need this and we'll swipe it and give you a ticket. Uh, we'd love to see support for all of our student, student athletes, uh, see our campus flourish, uh, so come to the games. Tickets to games for students are included with each student tuition prices and fees. Tucker Hoffman says depending on the event or the sponsor of the event, not all tickets are free for students. Regardless, all tickets can be bought from the box office if the event is held on the PSU campus. Box office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, please visit PSU Ticket Office online or call at 620-235-4796. Coming up, we go to our sports segment with new tailgating rules for the stadium, athletes, coaches, and more. All to come when Cavs 13 News returns after the break. Choking can happen anywhere, anytime. If someone can't speak, cough, or breathe, you need to act fast. The Heimlich Maneuver could save a life. Stand behind the person, wrap your arms around their waist, and make a fist with one hand. Place it just above their belly button, grasp it with your other hand, and give quick upward thrusts. Continue until the object is expelled or they can breathe again. Remember, every second counts. Learn the Heimlich Maneuver today. You could be a hero.
planet Earth. Vital to us all. And still, sometimes, some of us take it for granted. But how much can we ignore? How much can we overlook before it's too much? Or before it's too late? Your choice matters. A lot of little efforts have a big impact. Welcome to Caps 13 Sports. I'm Brandon Segal. And I'm Nick Butler. Pitt State saw a lively crowd for their homecoming football game. Alumni, students, friends, and family returned to Pittsburgh State University this weekend to celebrate homecoming. Just outside Carney Smith Stadium, Gorilla Fest included with the traditional Gorilla Walk leading into the 2 p.m. game against Fort Hayes State. This game marked the debut of new tailgating rules, which included beer pong along with enhanced safety measures. Excitement was visible as hundreds of fans gathered the stadium, filling up with supporters on both sides. The Gorillas won this game by one. Many athletes across the country travel long distances to continue their athletic careers. We never really talk about the impact that might have on athletes. I sat down with the player and coach from Pitt State who both traveled long distances to play college football. Um, I was a player, I'm from California. Um, I played junior college two years there in California and then transferred out to the University of Toledo, which is in Ohio. Okay, so many, many miles from where I was from, um, making a decision. I didn't put too much thought in it, honestly. Like going from junior college, um, I wanted to be anywhere, Division One. That was like my, my mindset. Um, when I was coming out of high school, I wanted to be closer to home. But when I was at home for two years, I wanted to be somewhere else. So that was kind of my process and thought process to that. Um, you know, leaving, when I figured out how far Ohio was from California, I was a little bit shocked, and, like, it was some shock kind of right after I made the decision with my family, and they're like, you know, they just, it was just a lot of uncertainty. Like, you don't know, um, you know, what Ohio is. I've never been there, or I've been there once on a visit, but, like, you know, the people, and am I going to see, you know, how often am I going to see my family at home? Um, but when I ended up going there, um, yes, I was homesick a little bit, but I feel like it all depends on the person. Jake Bogdan talks to us about his experience of traveling a long distance to continue his college football career. It was a culture shock at first because I'm from a bigger city north of Dallas and here the population is much smaller so there's a lot less um, things to do but once you get to meet the people and uh, get to be a part of the town it's, it's not too bad. And something that's a struggle is I don't really get to see any of my family um, I have I get to see my immediate family like my mom and dad they'll come up um, but I don't really get to see my grandparents on both sides they both live in Texas so I can't go home and see them make sure you check in on athletes who travel a long distance to get to college your support might help them in ways they could never imagine Pittsburgh State University Alumni Association has chosen the group of people to be awarded with the Dr. Kenneth K. Bateman Outstanding Alumni Award. This award goes to individuals that have shown significant professional growth and advancement since the completion of their degree. One of this year's winners is Ryan Bartlett. Ryan Bartlett graduated from Pitt State in 2003 with a degree in communications. Now, he is a senior producer at Fox Sports, but he still appreciates Pitt State for recognizing him as an outstanding alumni. Oh, it feels great. It's like the highest honor of my life, and it's just, I, I almost feel not worthy of it. He has a lot of experience in a field that many students are looking to get into. Because of this, the university has asked him many times to come and talk to students. He always finds the time to do so. Oh, it's an honor to be asked to come back. Um, this university just means everything to me. I wouldn't be anywhere where I am now without Pitt State. Um, literally the, the best five years of my life. Um, 
so it was an honor to come back. So um, I guess I'm just lucky that they asked me to come back and that I'm still allowed here. Bartlett has also helped students in the communications department, giving advice and helping them gain experience. Oh yeah, uh, Ryan definitely deserves the award. Like I said, he's one of the most hardworking people. Just texting with him alone, you can tell that he's there to help you. Uh, he texts you, he knows, hey man, I got this job for you. What, do you want to take it? And he's like, parentheses, you probably should. And you're like, yeah, I'll take it. Just anything to get my name out there. He has traveled all around the country, having many jobs in the process and getting the opportunity to meet many celebrities. He has worked on shows that have had millions of views, but he never forgets where he came from. Oh, I'm like, do you want to be a part of greatness? If so, come to Pitt State, because Pitt State is greatness. For Caps 13 News, I'm Nick Butler. The Pitt State football team has their own strength staff. The two are on staff are individuals have a well-versed background in the realm of strength and performance. Cody Williams and Sean Kenny are the two individuals who make up the Pitt State football strength staff. Their duties include anything from the performance-based side of football. These things include weight training, physical endurance, speed, as well as nutrition. Between them are a countless number of internships that make them well-rounded in the sports performance realm. I took my internship at the University of Connecticut. I was with their football team and I also helped out with women's lacrosse. From there, I took an internship at the University of Oregon. Um, I was there for three seasons. Sean Kinney has seen his fair share of internships as well. With an internship at Arkansas, so from uh, June of 21 all the way till January of 22, I was an in, a strength and conditioning intern at the University of Arkansas and that was an incredible time for me. Sean Kenny not only has had internships at the University of Arkansas, but he held the position at the University of Arizona beforehand. Coach Kenny was also able to work under Pete Bomarito, a renowned strength and conditioning coach in Miami. He was able to work with top tier athletes during that time. So I went to Miami. Uh, I specialized in NFL draft prep. That was my thing with Pete. Um, I got to help with one first round draft pick and a few other draft picks and then a few guys now that play in the Canadian Football League. These opportunities for these men have propelled them to where they are now, helping the PSU football team get into shape so they can get bigger, faster, and stronger. Cody Williams says this place is special. Getting to Pitt State was one of the best, best things that probably could have happened to me. Um, I absolutely love it here. The, the coaches, the community, the players especially are, are the reason I, I enjoy it here so much and there is nothing he would change about his path to becoming a gorilla. Coming up next, we will go over the weather reports of the coming week with our meteorologist, AJ, and more when Caps 13 return. It is important for everyone to follow the ways of the road to stay safe. According to the FCC, more than 3,300 people have been killed due to distracted drivers, and roughly 290,000 people have been injured. People nowadays have a temptation of looking at their phone while driving. Texting and driving has been easier now more than ever. Do your job to help keep the road safe. Don't look at your phone, look at the road. Don't tempt fate, the text can wait. If you live in a small town, there's a big chance that there is some sort of publication or broadcast group that presents local news. According to the American Journalism Project, a philanthropic organization that assists local news groups with funding, nearly 3,000 local newspapers have ceased operations since 2005. It's essential to make information easily accessible to the public. Southeast Kansas has a strong history in rural journalism. Find a way to help support it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, you ready to go? Yeah, hurry up. Let's go. Um, not gonna put your seatbelt on? Uh, no, for what? We're just going around the corner. I guess you have a point. Yeah, I'm always at. I don't know why you never listen to me. So you do this every single time. Whoa! <laughs> Being buckled up during a crash helps keep you safe inside your vehicle. Hello, gorillas. Oh. Let's get into the weather. It's sunny with 87 degrees right now as we move into 7 p.m. Cools off a bit to 79 degrees. In the end, as we fade into the night, it gets down to 74 degrees. Tomorrow has more fall-like temperatures, thank gosh. This time tomorrow is going to be 74 degrees and sunny. High temperature 75, low temperature 55, visibility about 10 miles, and a humidity of 62%. A nice northerly breeze at 14 miles per hour. Now let's view our temperatures from across the region. It's cooking in Wichita right now with temperatures at 90 degrees. However, it's nice up in Goodlands, which is clear over here. And as you see this trend, the more south and the east you go, uh, the more likely you are to have higher temperatures, uh, 83 in Kansas City and 86 in the capital city of Topeka. Let's go into the weekend, nightly temperatures of 55 on Friday and a uh, low of 53, uh, high of 71 on Saturday. That night, uh, get ready for the fall swing early to the middle of Sunday and uh, Monday. So be sure to wear a light jacket, especially on Sunday and Monday, because we'll have 53, or 53 uh, into a 78, and then a 61 into an 82. Uh, that's all for weather. Up next on Cap 13, oh, what the heck? The open road is dangerous. Crashes happen more than you think. It can happen to someone you know, someone you don't know, or even you. Stick to the signs. Speeding kills. Pitt State students care about the golden rule, and so should you. Thank you. The Student Government Association is hosting the second annual Trunk or Treat. The end of October is falling upon us. This means that it is about time for kids to grab their costumes and adults to get ready to get some candy out. Halloween is right around the corner, and the Pittsburgh State Student Government Association is doing their part to provide a fun and safe environment for the kids to trick or treat. Last year we had over 700 people from the community come out, uh, get free candy, have a great time, show off their costumes, and this year we're hoping for even more. So uh, hopefully this will be a tradition that the Student Government Association and Pitt State will continue to push on throughout the years um, and just have a safe way for everyone to enjoy some Halloween fun. The Trunk or Treat takes place on October 30th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. It will be located in the lobby of the Bicknell Center.
go on out and enjoy some Halloween fun. Some great stories this week, Riley. Hopefully with the police department moving, that means a lot less, less campus parking tickets around. Yeah, maybe it'll even open up a couple of parking spots on campus so that I'm uh, not late to class every day. <laughs> Hopefully so. I'm Riley Wagner. And I'm Mitch Adams. And from all of us at CAPS 13, have a great rest of your evening, and we'll see you next time.